I'm going to tell you why downtown DC is an excellent place to stay for your trip. My name is Rob. I'm a tour guide and the founder of Trip Hacks DC Tours. On this channel, I am sharing my best tips, tricks, and hacks for exploring the nation's capital. So if you're interested in that, make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell notification icon so that you don't miss anything in the future. This video is part of my Where to Stay series, where I walk you through 11 of my favorite areas in the city where you can stay during your trip, including the basics, like where it's located and what the transportation situation is like as well as my recommended hotels, places to eat, and things to do. For a full list of the 11 areas, check out triphacksdc.com stay, or find the link in the video description. If you have stayed downtown on a previous Washington DC trip, or you're a local who lives downtown, leave a comment on this video and let me know what you like most about the area. With all of that said, let's get started. I consider downtown to be the area roughly around the White House. So if you're starting right at the White House, it's a few blocks to the north, a few blocks to the west, and to the east, all the way down to the National Mall. This is a way to visualize it if you look at it on a map. Downtown is one of the easiest places in the city as far as getting around. There are four metro stations that you can use. Farragut West, McPherson Square, Metro Center, and Federal Triangle. There's also the Georgetown to Union Station circulator bus route, which runs right through downtown on K Street. And there's the Woodley Park to McPherson Square circulator route, which takes you from McPherson Square almost all the way up to the National Zoo. And downtown is such a central location that there are a ton of things within walking distance if you're physically up for it. More on that in a bit. People who live downtown typically live here because they really value the convenience. Almost all of the housing downtown is in multifamily buildings, so there are very few individual houses. So this is not an area where you would expect to see a lot of large families, but downtown living is popular among smaller families, if they can afford it. And that can be kind of a big if. To give you a sense of what it costs, a one bedroom condo in this building sold last year for about $500,000 plus an additional $500 per month condo fee. If you prefer to rent, the asking price for a one bedroom apartment in this building is $2,700 per month. Needless to say, this is not a cheap area to live. For visitors, the good news is that there are more hotels concentrated downtown than just about anywhere else. So you have plenty of choices. If you can swing it, I love the Willard Hotel. This hotel has come up in several episodes of the Trip Hacks DC podcast because there is so much history associated with it. Of course, the Willard of today is not the same bricks and mortar that Abraham Lincoln stayed in the night before his inauguration. But still, the hotel on this spot has been the site of so much history. It has a lot of cool claims to fame. And if you want to grab a drink, the Round Robin Bar inside is one of the best places to do that. The Willard has a pretty unbeatable location. You're a two minute walk from the White House, an eight minute walk to the Natural History Museum, and a five minute walk to Metro Center Station, where you can access four different metro lines. Now I know, the Willard is on the higher end as far as hotels go. So if you're looking for a more modest option, I really like the Homewood Suites downtown. It is farther from the metro, but it's still walkable to a decent number of things, including a ton of bars and restaurants on 14th Street, if that's your thing. One of the best things about this Homewood Suites is that it comes with continental breakfast and coffee included in your room rate, which can really help you save some money. This one even has an evening social hour a few days of the week which is basically free snacks, beer, and wine. If you wanna book either of these hotels, I will leave links down in the video description. They are affiliate links, so I will earn a little commission if you use them, but you don't have to. All of the hotels I recommend, I recommend because they're places where I would send my own mother, or I would stay if my apartment flooded. I just want you to have a great experience. The most famous restaurant downtown is probably Old Ebbett Grill. It's on 15th Street, right across from the White House and about a block up from the Willard. It has a reputation of being a bit of an institution, 
with a ton of history. And for a restaurant that gets a large amount of its business from tourists, it's actually pretty good. I always get the oysters when I go to Old Ebbet. In fact, I usually try to go when they have them for half price. So make sure to check out their website for days and hours so that you can take advantage of this little trip hack. If you're looking for cheap eats, District Taco, one of my favorites, has a location downtown. So does Taquerian, another one of my personal favorites. Since this area has a lot of office buildings and hungry office workers, it generally has very good lunch options, like GCDC, the grilled cheese bar, which is a great comfort food. And if you do wanna go outside your hotel for breakfast, there's Wicked Waffle, which is one of the places where I ate when I did my $20 per day challenge. For more information about eating well on your trip, make sure to listen to the Trip Hacks DC podcast episode about restaurants. The best thing about staying downtown is that it's close to seemingly everything. If you're physically up for it, you can walk down to the Monuments Memorials and the museums. You can walk up 14th Street for some amazing restaurants and bars, or west to a concert or a game at Capital One Arena. Although in reality, downtown is a lot of office buildings and most of the sites are just outside. The White House being the obvious exception. But aside from stopping there to snap a photo from the outside, or maybe if you get a reservation to tour on the inside, you're really not gonna spend that much time at the White House. If you're into theater, the Warner Theater and National Theater are both in this area. So make sure to check out their websites to see what kind of shows are gonna be playing on the dates you're visiting. And if you like to do shopping on your vacation, there are a whole bunch of stores over by the Metro Center Station. And that's it, thank you for watching this video. If you made it this far, then I highly recommend another Trip Hacks DC video. So go ahead and click or tap right over here to watch the next one. And if you're coming to DC and interested in signing up for a Trip Hacks DC guided tour, you can click on the Capitol Dome on the left side of my head. That'll send you right over to tripxdc.com where you can see all of the tours that we offer. Enjoy your trip.